Good evening, Gateway Church family, and welcome to our prayer meeting online. I hope you've had a great start to the weekend. I hope that you're looking forward to joining together tonight to pray and call upon Jesus. As a church, we believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God answers prayer, and we'd love to pray for you. Maybe you're watching this tonight and you have a prayer request. Then please send it in to us. You can do that through whatever platform you're watching this on, through all our social media platforms, and also through our website as well, gatewaychurchcamry.co.uk forward slash prayer request and please know that we will be praying for you and believing for God to move in your life a little later on we're going to pray for all the different prayer requests that have been coming into us we'll be praying for our congregation our community and our nation as well and tonight we're going to begin a brand new ser sermon series together as well and I pray it'll be an encouragement to us as we come to our time of prayer but let's just open up our time together let's pray let's call upon Jesus and ask him to meet with us wherever you're watching this from tonight amen shall we pray Jesus, we're just so grateful that we can come together tonight, Lord, in different places. But Lord, we're just so grateful that you are with us. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the midst, Lord. And I just pray that we'll know you with us this evening. Lord, you know every person who's watching online right now. Lord, you know the needs, the circumstances, the hardships, the difficulties. And Lord, I'm just so grateful that you're able to meet every single need. I pray you'll encourage us tonight. I pray you'll answer prayer. You'll bring about breakthrough, healing, miracle salvations, even in our homes tonight, Lord. Lord, nothing is impossible for you. And Lord, we trust in you. So Lord, we just commit tonight to you and we pray. Come and have your way amongst us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to begin a brand new sermon series together in our prayer meetings over the next few weeks. And I pray that it'll encourage us and we're going to be reading tonight from the Passion Translation of the Bible and we're going to read a very familiar story. It's in Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. This is what it says. Several days later, Jesus returned to Capernaum and the news quickly spread that he was back in town. Soon there were so many people crowded inside the house to hear him that there was no more room, even outside the door. While Jesus was preaching the word of God, Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man. But when they realized they couldn't get near him because of the crowd, they went up to the top of the roof and tore away the roof above Jesus' head. And when they had broken through, they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front of him. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are now forgiven. This offended some of the religious scholars who were present and they reasoned among themselves. Who does he think he is to speak this way? This is blasphemy for sure. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus supernaturally perceived their thoughts and said to them, Why are you being so skeptical? Which is easier to say, this to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are now forgiven, or stand up and walk. But to convince you that the Son of Man has been given authority to forgive sins, I say to this man, Stand up, pick up your stretcher, and walk home. Immediately, the man sprang to his feet and in front of everyone and left home. When the crowds witnessed this miracle, they were awestruck. They shouted praises to God and said, we've never seen anything like this before. Now, I know some of you watching this right now, you might be wondering, why on earth are we sharing this story in a prayer meeting? There's no mention of prayer in this story. And you are right. There's no mention of prayer in the story. So what has this got to do with our prayer meeting. Well, as I began to read through this passage, there was something that really stood out to me as I was reading this in my own daily devotions, and that is powerful things happen when Jesus is in the room. Great things, miracles, incredible things happen when Jesus is in the room. And that is the title of our new series, When Jesus is in the Room. And over the next few weeks, we're going to unpack this passage, this story together and see some of the incredible things that can happen when God's presence, when Jesus is in the room. Tonight we're going to look at the first thing that really began to speak to me, that God really began to show me through this and that is before God can do anything in the room, he's got to be invited first of all. We've got to invite Jesus into the room. We see first of all here in the story that Jesus was invited into this house. Now we're not told whose house he is actually in. Some Bible commentators say that he was in Peter's house. Other Bible commentators say that he was in Zebedee and Salome's house, who was the parents of John and James, the disciples of Jesus. 
But all, we told, all we're told here is that Jesus, he had been ministering in the region of Galilee. He'd been preaching the word of God and healing and performing signs and wonders. And then he comes back to Capernaum and we see here that he's invited into and welcome into this house. Before Jesus did any miracle here, before he healed this paralyzed man, Jesus was welcome into this home. This home was prepared for Jesus. Jesus was invited into this house. And, you know, as I began to even meditate on this and think about this, you know, I wonder, is Jesus welcome into our home? Is Jesus welcome into our church? Is Jesus welcome into the home of our hearts? Is he welcome into our lives? Have we invited Jesus into our lives? You know, Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 is that it's these incredible words from Jesus. He says this, he says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Now, this Bible verse is often quoted to non-Christians about how Jesus is at the door of our hearts and how if we open up our lives to him, then Jesus will come into our lives and be our Lord and Savior. But you know what's interesting here is that these words from Jesus are actually to a church. It's the church of Laodicea. And, you know, these were believers. These were Christians, followers of Jesus who were once on fire for Jesus. They loved Jesus. They had a passion for Jesus. But they had become lukewarm in their relationship with Jesus. They had lost their first love. And Jesus was saying to them, look, you've lost that first love. But behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you let me back in, if you invite me back into your life, then I will come in and we'll enjoy fellowship together and you'll know me and we'll have this incredible relationship, this friendship together. And you know, we see here that, that Jesus is asking, will we welcome him in? He doesn't force himself into any heart, into any life. He doesn't force himself into any church, even though it is his church. But we see here that Jesus stands at the door and wonders, will we welcome him, in, welcome him into our lives? Isn't that amazing to think that the God who created you still waits to be invited into your life. It's absolutely incredible. We've got to make that decision for ourselves. You know, even as I was thinking about this, you know, I want, I want to know God in a greater way. I want to know him in a personal way. I want to be used by God to do great things for the Lord in my life. I want to see God move in powerful ways in my life. But you know, that only happens as I invite him in, even on a daily basis. And I surrender my life afresh to him every day and say, Lord, come into my life. Be my savior today. Be my Lord today. Many people, they just want Jesus as their savior to forgive them of their sins, but they don't want him as Lord of their lives, leading their lives, controlling their lives, master over their lives. But, you know, we see here that God, Jesus wants to come in and have all of our heart, not just a part of our lives, all of our lives. But it begins with us inviting him in. And, you know, I want to see God do incredible things within the life of our church as well. I want to see God move in powerful ways. God's promised that he'll do great things. But in order for him to do that, We've got to welcome him. We've got to allow him to come and be Lord even within his church. You know, it's sad to say, but many churches, they, they neglect Jesus. Many churches, Jesus is standing on a, not, you know, metaphorically standing outside of the door. You know, people today, churches today, they, they want everybody in the room except Jesus. And, you know, it's the saddest thing. But, you know, we'll see here even in the next couple of weeks that, that when Jesus is in the room, powerful things happen. But, you know, when we pray, when we call upon the Lord individually and corporately as a church as well, that's what we are doing. We are welcoming Jesus into the room. We are welcoming Jesus into our lives. Prayer is that invitation. Not that it should be needed, but prayer is that invitation saying, Jesus, we want you to dwell amongst us. Be Lord, be Savior in this place. Jesus, we invite you in. And you know, when we pray, we're not only inviting him in, we're giving him the keys as well. We're saying, Lord, we need you. And just like these people here, before this miracle took place, just like these people invited Jesus into their house, I wonder, will we invite Jesus into our lives tonight? Will we invite him into the light, into the house, into the room of our hearts? Will we invite him even into our church? Before Jesus saves, before he heals, before he performs miracles and signs and wonders, there must be an invitation for him to come in. And when he does, powerful things will happen. And so the challenge tonight on this first message in this brand new series is, will we invite Jesus into the room? And will we invite Jesus into our hearts? Will we invite him into our lives? Will we invite him into the church? That's what we are doing when we pray. We say, Lord, we need you. And 
I want to encourage you, even right now, just take a moment and invite Jesus to come into your life again. Maybe you have been a follower of Jesus for many years, but maybe you push Jesus on the outside. Maybe he isn't Lord of your heart. Maybe he's Savior, but maybe he's not Lord of your life. I want to encourage you, put him first again in your life. Invite him in. Allow him to move within your life and he will do incredible things. And for us as a church, this is why we are praying. This is why there's so much importance on the prayer meeting is we're saying, Lord, we need you. Come, we need you. We need your presence, Jesus. We want you to be Lord in this church. That's what we're doing when we're praying and calling upon God, declaring our need and our dependence of the Lord. So I want to encourage you tonight to do that in your own life this evening. Let's just take a moment and do that and then we'll come back together and pray. Amen. Well, I hope that God has spoken to you through that word tonight. And you've done that even over this, this, these last few seconds. I pray that you've put Jesus first in your life and invited him back into your life this evening. And as we do that, watch what God will do. He'll do powerful things. And you know, tonight as we pray, we, we're inviting him to come into our homes, into our situations, into our circumstances. And we're going to pray tonight for different prayer requests that have been coming into us. We're going to pray for the needs in our congregation. There are many who are sick in our congregation. Many who are fighting personal battles and circumstances, hard situation where they feel feeling even the enemy coming against them. And we're going to pray for God to move miraculous, miraculously in their lives. And we're also going to pray for our nation and our community that we'll see God move in powerful ways in our nation. And so I'd like to invite you right now, wherever you're watching this from, would you join with me? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, tonight we are encouraged by your word, Lord. We, we can see what you can do, Lord, when you are in the room but tonight we even from the outset we just say lord we invite you lord to come into our lives lord i invite you again come into my life afresh even right now lord jesus we invite you into our church we invite you into our homes lord into our lives and lord we declare tonight we need you we need you lord as our savior and we need you as our lord as well we give you our hearts we give you our lives this evening and we pray have your way in our lives lord and lord you know every person who's watching online right now you know the circumstances they are facing Lord, you know the needs even within our congregation, the people who are struggling right now with members of their families who are ill, Lord God, those even in our congregation who are ill, Lord, those who are facing personal struggles at this time. Lord Jesus, I just pray you will meet every single need, Lord. You'll bring healing, Lord God. You'll bring about breakthroughs. You'll bring about healing and, and restoration, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will give courage to those who are afraid even to come back, Lord. I pray that you will give them courage to come back along to the family of God, Lord. Lord Jesus, I'm just praying you'll move in mighty ways in these circumstances. For all those who are watching online, Lord, I pray you'll provide and meet needs even this evening. We invite you into the circumstances, Lord, and pray and ask that you would come and do what only you can do. And Lord, we pray tonight for our community. Lord, we pray for Abraham and we pray for Abaday and we pray your blessing upon it, Lord. We pray we'll see you move in powerful ways, Lord Jesus, and we'll see a revival even in our time in our community. Lord, we thank you that we are seeing even the end of this, this virus, Lord. There seems to be light at the end of this tunnel. But Lord, we pray that you will continue to keep us safe and protect us, we ask in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray tonight you will move in our nation, move in our land, Lord, that we would see a revival in Wales again, in the UK again, Lord. Do what only you can do. Our nation needs you at this time, Lord. So Lord, we turn to you and we invite you. Come, Lord. Be Lord again. Have your way. Pour out your spirit. Move and do what only you can do. Lord, we turn to you and trust in you tonight. So Lord Jesus, tonight, even at the opening of this series, Lord, we declare, Lord, will you come and have your way in our lives? We invite you, Lord Jesus, into our lives, into this church. We invite you into our hearts, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you will do what only you can do. And we ask this, Lord Jesus, so you will be glorified, that all praise, praise and glory and honor will go to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been such a great joy to come together tonight for our prayer meeting. And I pray that God has spoken to you through this first message in this series. And I'm looking forward in the weeks to come to continue to dive into this, this chapter, this passage. And I pray that God will speak to you. If you do have prayer requests, please continue to send them in to us and, and we'll pray for you. As a church, we meet on Tuesdays to pray, Wednesdays to pray, and I'll be praying for you. Our congregation will be praying for you every day. And I believe that God's going to answer that prayer and move powerfully in your life. But I hope you have a great week this week, and 
Look forward to seeing you again this coming weekend. Join us in person either at 10.30 a.m. or you can join us online at 5 p.m. But I hope you have a great week this weekend. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. God bless.